Hello, everyone. Welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today is March into March and spring into spring. I hope you're ready to think about this month. Feel free to drop a name in the chat. Say hello to us. We're looking forward to learning with you. Again, welcome to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today is March into March and spring into spring. Hi, Donnie, so glad to have you with us today. Glad to see some of our friends. We know they're coming in. One more time to help you out. Today is the APH Virtual Excel Academy and our theme is March into March and spring into spring. And we have our lovely Audrey shading back with us. Hi, Audrey, how are you? Hey, Leanne, I'm just fine. Thank you, I'm so delighted to be here. Well, I am turning them over to you. Okay, hi everybody. This is an exciting time. It is just, I look forward to every month coming to do this program. And we are going to be actors again today because we're going to think about the new season that's coming and we're going to pretend we're already there, we're almost there. Uh, we'll be birds and trees, we'll hear some birds and we'll visit some really wonderful holidays and talk about people's birthdays. And first, let's find out who knows what our new month is. And this is Robin in the background. I will be reading for Miss Audrey today. So go ahead and put your answers into the chat. And when you hear my voice, I'm reading what's going on in, in the chat. So Audrey, we already have some answers coming through. Uh, Donnie quickly told us that the month coming up is March. Very good. Excellent. And what is our date, the actual date today? Good question. We'll see if anybody knows that. If you know what today's date is, will you put that in the chat for us and I will read your answer. All right, I see Nikki has written in March 2nd. I think we've got a winner. Yeah, we do. We sure do. March 2nd it is, just the second day. And I want to know if we're celebrating any birthdays because we're always celebrating birthdays every month. So does anybody have a birthday this month or know somebody who's got a birthday? You know what, Audrey? I yeah. have a birthday this month. You do? I do. My oh, birthday right. is March 18th. Oh, gosh, that's good. Not too far away. Not well, too happy far birthday. away. Happy and birthday. And Nikki, also, hello, birthday month, friend. Nikki's birthday is March 31st. Oh, the very end of March. Wow. Okay, the day before April begins, the day before April Fool's Day. Well, you know what? Yesterday, my dad and my grandpa both had the same birthday. So that was so cool because when my dad was born on his dad's birthday and I always remember them. So that is very, very cool for me to remember. And I wanna talk for just a minute about someone else who had a birthday a long, long time ago. And he used to write this beautiful, beautiful music over 200 years ago. And his last name was Chopin. It sounds kind of really cool, doesn't it? Frederick Chopin. I'm just gonna play a little bit of the music that he wrote, it's classical music, which means that everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people like this kind of music and listen to it even though it was written hundreds of years ago. It just stays with people and they call it classical. So we have, it's called Nocturne 20. And I'm just gonna play a little bit of it and I wanna see if you can guess the instrument that is being played. I'm sure you're gonna know it, but here we go. Give me one second while I ask our robot friend. Play Nocturne 20. Here's a station for you based on the song Nocturne number 20 in C sharp minor, 549 by Frédéric Chopin on Amazon Music. It's 
very relaxing, right? Now, my robot didn't exactly do as I asked her to do. She said she played a station with songs like that. So we're not going to take the time to see if this is it exactly, but it is very much like that song. They could play a lot of different things of Chopin. So one more second of this instrument, and I'll be quiet. Okay, I bet somebody can chat in the chat box or tell us what is that instrument? Hello, Audrey, it's Robin, who's gonna read our chat. And yes, we have two of the same guesses. Two people guess piano is the oh, instrument yeah. we were listening to. Oh, that is exactly right. Isn't it beautiful? What I like about so many instruments is that you can play them so quietly, like that's a classical. You could also do rock and roll with a piano or rock music or you know, all kinds of jazz, different kinds of music with instruments by the way you play them. We're going to visit another instrument later on. So that's his birthday uh, yesterday. We remember, we remember him. I'm going to talk about another birthday um, before we get into our main theme. We've got two, two other things to recognize. Um, on Thursday, it's a president's birthday. And his name was, you're going to love this because you're going to think about when you hear his last name, you're going to think about something else, I bet. I'm smiling already. His name was James Madison. When you hear the word Madison, don't you think of Madison Avenue? Maybe you have a Madison Avenue in your city. Maybe you have a friend named Madison. I do. I have two friends named Madison. So anyway, that's his last name. And sometimes people name their kids Madison as their first name. Well, the cool thing about James Madison, there are a lot of, a lot of very interesting things about James Madison. And I've written, I've put one of the books about him in a letter that I, that I sent out. But he was the shortest president of the United States. He was only five feet, four inches. So anyway, his birthday is Thursday. We're going to play a game later if we have time. And if we don't have time, I think it's such a good game. We're going to save it for next time. But it's a short and tall game. So remember that he's the shortest president because that could be in your one of your game uh, questions. The other president we're going to, to talk about is somebody whose birthday we celebrated last month. And that's Abraham Lincoln. He was the tallest president so far in all of our presidents. He was six feet, four inches tall. So that is really super tall. So again, that could be in our game. He could be the tallest. When I ask you who the tallest president is, you'll know. So that's short and tall. So keep those in your mind. And speaking of short and tall, these words are adjectives. They explain what kind of something is if you're a tall person, a short person, if you have long hair, um, short hair, those kinds of words describe. And on Thursday, we have another day. And I just found out about this day yesterday. It's called National Grammar Day. Now, if you're in school and you study sentences and learn how to speak and how to write, and I'm sure you do, what you're doing is you're working with grammar, G-R-A-M-M-A-R. -M -M Think about grammar, but it's grammar. Some people like to make jokes about that. So when, when you have grammar, when you're learning how to speak correctly. So if I said to you, remember when we went into our time machines, we went into the past and the future, and here I'm going to give you a sentence and I'm going to say, today I, was a bird, but I'm gonna fix that because it could be true, that could be true in the past, but I'm going to change it now. Yesterday, I will be a bird. That isn't right, right? Remember we did past and future? Yesterday, I not will be, but I was a bird, a verb. So a bird, think of verb here, right? So I was a bird, and if I said tomorrow, I was a fish. Again, that would not be correct. We'd have to have, I will be a fish. So those are things we can imagine. And we 
are going to pretend we're things later on. And fish is important for one of the holidays we're going to talk about. And so are birds. And so are other animals. Well, remember on Thursday when you're at school that it's National Grammar Day. So you can tell your teachers about that. Okay, so now we talked about birthdays, we talked about March, and there's another meaning for March besides it being our month. Our title today is March into March. And when I hear that, I wanna hear some music, I wanna have my feet go and my hands clapping, do something on the table. What is that marching? What is that? Oh, I gave it away. I just told what it is. Anybody know what is March? What does that mean? What do we do when we march? Hello, Audrey, this is Robin. And uh -huh. we already have some ideas coming through about what it means to march. Mm -hmm. And so one student thinks of soldiers that are marching. Ah, that's right. We do have soldiers are in there marching and they say left, right, left, right. And they have to march and, and keep in a special beat and being together. So that's, that's correct about soldiers. Anybody else? Oh, Donnie mentioned something very similar. He mentioned something called ROTC. And when I read that, I smile because when I was in high school, <clears throat> I used to do JROTC, which is kind of like an army or a military type of activity. And guess what? We did a lot of marching in ROTC. Wow. That oh. is, yeah, more? Oh, we do. We have so much, a little bit more coming through. So now Nikki has also suggested a marching band. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, Nikki. And that one makes me smile because I feel like we're entering parade season and you get to see all of the marching bands. Yeah, from schools and scouts and all kinds of holidays, parades. And we are going to be in a parade in a little while a special holiday that's coming up in March. Well, oh. the last one, can I just share what my way of marching is? Yes. Since I live somewhere where there's lots of snow, I end up doing lots of baby marching. And every time I come in out of the snow, I march my feet or stomp them, I guess. But I get rid of all my snow that way. And then it's just fun to do to make that sound. It is. I like that sound too. We have snow here too. I, I do the same thing. My dog thinks I'm a little silly, but it's good. It's very good. Okay, so we have that meaning for March and we're going to have a song coming up soon about marching and we will march. Okay, so we, after March, we're going to talk about the season that's coming up. And this is a very important season now. It's not here yet, but it's going to be here. And anybody in the chat box? Tell us what is the season coming? Oh, I see an answer already coming through. I see an answer from Nikki and then our friend Donnie and they both say that spring is right around the corner. Yay, the you are right. And now let's just think about spring where I live in New York state. It's not spring yet. In fact, it's so cold out today. It feels like snow. I really put all my winter clothes on again today because it's really, really cold. So it's not spring yet, but when it comes, the weather is going to be fresh and have temperatures, oh, maybe 70. It's going to feel great in the 60s and 70s and wear a sweater. I'm looking forward to it. I'd like to know about spring other places where you live. Robin, can you tell me about spring where you are? Well, spring for me in Utah usually means we still have snow on the ground and I won't be seeing the signs of spring for several weeks to come. Ah. But this winter has been an unusually warm winter where I see that everybody else is getting lots of snow our snow is still in the mountains. So our spring right now is only 45 degrees, which is actually, well, warm-ish for me, 
but probably cold for Leanne when she talks about the spring oh. where she lives. Thank you, Robin. Leanne, can you tell us about spring where you are? Sure, I'm in Florida. So spring has already sprung here. We've oh. already had a few days that were 80 plus degrees. Wow. The blooms are starting to show. We have, we have, we have the pink tulip trees that are blooming and our azaleas, which come in a variety of colors, are now showing up. So we have quite a bit of spring here in Florida. Wow, that sounds lovely. <laughs> Very different from where we are. <laughs> Enjoy it. How about Danielle, who's visiting today, who's going to be uh, with you tomorrow? What's spring like where you are? Hello, I'm currently in Phoenix, Arizona, and spring is about 74 to 80 degrees. So it's nice and warm. And right now, a lot of the cacti are starting to bloom, which is giving us a very beautiful fragrance in the air. And we get to see a lot of hummingbirds. Oh, wow. Hummingbirds are really, really, really beautiful, aren't they? They sure are. So we have spring in a lot of places. Anybody um, in our in the chat box want to tell us anything about spring where they are? Here comes Robin with some answers. Oh, good. So Monica says that spring in California is really nice. And I bet it is really nice to have that. Um, Donnie shares that it is still winter in Middletown, Delaware. Uh, now we are going to pack our bags and go on a very long flight to where Nikki is or where she's reporting from. Nikki says in India, another country outside of the United States. It is like sunny and we get flowers. Wow. That's that, nice. That's really nice. And that is very, very far away. Isn't it great that we can Zoom and be together even if we are far for, in, in many, many different places. Thank you. Okay, so that's our season that we're gonna talk about. And guess what? Next month in April, we're gonna still talk about it because it's such a great season and it starts toward the end of our month. It starts on March 20th. So we've got a ways to go until it really gets here. Um, so in April, we're gonna come back again to spring. There's another meaning for, of spring and I'm ready to do it myself with my body. I wanna just kind of bounce up and down and jump up and down just a little bit. That's a spring. Or if you're really, really happy, somebody says you have a spring in your step. You're really, really not just walking like you're kind of, somebody might say you're walking on air, which is silly because we're not really walking on air, but you're really happy. And you might jump a little bit and bounce. And I think Tigger from Winnie the Pooh was a, is a springy character. He's always bouncing. And some toys have springs in them and you can kind of bounce that toy up and down. Uh, there's a way to make a paper spring. And if anybody wants to know how to do that, I will have it ready for next time because it's super easy to make a paper spring. So I think that's a fun thing to make. We can make it in about, I bet less than three minutes, we can make a little paper spring. So springing is fun to spring around. It's just, it's just cool. I, I like the name for both things. Okay, so this is my song that I wrote and I'm smiling because I've got to work on the tune and I've got to work on the words. It's a song in progress. Okay, that means I'm working on it. I started writing it and I'm rewriting it. This is, I haven't written many songs, but I thought to myself that I would try. So if you would be kind and indulge me to sing you this song about March and spring, then we will go on to some other music and some holidays and, and other really fun things. So here goes my song. We will march into March. We will spring into spring. We will do a new dance. 
have a new song to sing. We will all clap our hands. We will march to the beat. We will clap with our hands and we'll march with our feet. We'll be in a parade and we'll make lots of noise. We'll have all kinds of fun. So come on girls and boys. And that's the song. So melody can need a little bit of more work. I tr will embellish it and, and make it uh, get some more notes in there. But that's the rhyme I put together and I wanted to share it. And I thank you for being so kind to listen. Well, wait a minute, Miss Audrey. Nikki has already said that she loved your song. Oh, thank you, Nikki. And I will tell you that when I listened to it, I was tapping my feet with the oh. idea of March into March and spring into spring. Oh, good. I loved it. It made me feel peppy. Good. That is good. Let's thank you, Leanne. I mean, Robin, <laughs> let's practice being a drum right now or making a drum with our hands before we get to our parade, okay? Um, if you take your hand, one of your hands, and make a fist, a tight fist, and have your thumb kind of rest on your finger, on any finger, maybe your top finger, but put your fist so that your thumb is facing your heart. So your finger, your thumb, and your fingers are kind of going to, the, I think I'm explaining it right. Let me make sure I'm doing this well, because I went over this. Okay, you have a fist, but if you have a fist and your fingers are pointing down, this time I want you to turn your fist so that your fingers are pointing at yourself. So your fingers are pointing to your heart. Make your fist and your thumb is pointing is the highest finger and the lowest finger toward your tummy is your pinky finger. So that's your drum. It really looks like a drum. It doesn't make a lot of noise, but if you don't have a real drum, of course we could also drum on the table, but I like this drum. And with your other hand, take any amount of fingers you want and let your thumb kind of rest. So you can use four fingers and beat your drum with four fingers and be a drum paddle, or you can do one or two fingers and you can be a drumstick. So try it and tell me what you think of this made up drum with your hands. I think it's a cool drum. So, and it's good, good exercise for our hands. Okay, so you have your drum ready for a later. And I'm gonna keep us in suspense about the holiday with marching. Talk about one or two more things first. We talked about school and in school this month is Women's History Month. So everyone is paying attention to women and ladies who made a difference. And even I bet some of them were girls before they grew up and they made a difference in our world to make it better. So that's what happens in March, Women's History Month. And there are so many women to recognize that we could talk for hours. So I'm just picking one person to recognize and her name was Susan B. Anthony. She had her birthday last month, but she did an amazing thing because she helped women organize. And does anyone know what she did that's really important for women today? Does anybody have an idea? We've done it here together too. Well, Miss Audrey, while everybody is thinking, I want to let you know that you have a fan of history and patriotism when it comes to Nikki. So I bet she has two ears wide open, ready to learn about Susan B. Anthony. She suggests that she fought for women's rights. Yes. But will you tell us more about her? Yes, I will. She, um, when Susan B. Anthony lived just a little over, mm, a little over a hundred years ago, women could not do a lot of the same things that we can do today. Women could not buy a house and own it a lot of, in a lot of places. Not, not sure about the whole country on that one, but it was really harder for a woman to own property. And 
a, the most important right that she worked for was the right to vote. We voted a lot of times for our favorite something and ice cream and, and different things. But the vote that was is so important in our country is that we vote for our leaders and only men could vote. And so she worked a long time and worked with a lot of women to organize and got the laws changed so that we could vote. She died before women got the right to vote. And the, do, the date that we got the right to vote was exactly 101 years ago in 1920. And she died before that. But she worked really, 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 really hard to make that happen for all of us. So it's so important as women and as young girls to remember that she really did that for us and that it's a really privilege that we have to vote. Thank you. I hope you liked that, Nikki and everybody. Okay, so now we are going to talk about a special holiday that's coming up that involves marching and a parade and the color green and it's coming really soon. Good food, dancing, singing, music. Does anybody know the name of this holiday? Oh, here come some answers. We have a big guess for St. Patrick's <gasps> Day. Oh, you got it. Yes, it is. It's going to be St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. So that's just 15 days away. Well, it's very, very special in Ireland, but it's also special here in the United States in a lot of countries. You know where Ireland is way far away. You know that is uh, near England, near Scotland, and near those countries. Does anybody know anybody from Ireland? I, I do. Live. You do? I do. What was so exciting is I was able to visit students who were blind in Ireland, and I went to a program that many students have heard of called Camp Abilities, and that's a sports program. So I got to go to a sports camp in Ireland with lots of Irish young adults and kids, and it was super fun. Oh, next time I'd like to go. <laughs> That sounds really, so really, really wonderful. And we yeah. even played goalball, which is so popular. We played goalball and we ate lots of good food and it was great. But I must tell you that Nikki has a wonderment, which is a question. She says, I wonder if we, if we should um, maybe learn about some patriotic music. Maybe we can learn about some Irish music. So we've got some wonderments. Keep talking to us about St. Patrick's Day. Oh, good. I, I like this wonderment. I like the word. Is that a, a word from Nikki or is that your word, Robin? You know, Miss Audrey, that's why I giggled is because wonderment is a word that I just made up. And mm -hmm. I realized when I said that out loud, that wonderment might be something that people might not know, but it means when you want to wonder about something. It's a wonderment. Yes. <laughs> it is a new word and I think we should add it to our language and start using it. I'm going to start using it. Oh, that is cool. Well, you have some really nice uh, slides to show us, but let's start with some music first. And the first music, it's not Irish music, but we'll get to the Irish music in a minute. I want you to hear another instrument. And when I asked my robot, she played, she did not play Irish music with that instrument, even though I wanted her to. Sometimes we don't get the robots to do all the things we want with the music. She's still playing Chopin right now. So I'm going to ask her to play the classical harp music because that I know she'll do. So um, Robin has a really nice picture of a harp and she'll show us that. First, let me play a little bit of the harp. Excuse me for one second. Play classical harp music. Playing this classical harp on Amazon Music. Oh, 
this music makes me smile. I'm gonna ask the name of the song and see if we can find out. What is the name of this song? This is Nocturne in E-flat major, R for Heart by Elizabeth Hainan. Okay, so it really is not marching music at all, <laughs> but it's very, very relaxing, maybe for just winding down at night. And I just think harp music is so, so lovely. And they use it for, in Ireland and they use violins in Ireland. They call them fiddles, I think, for Ireland Irish music and the same for a lot of our um, country music. The, that's how the violin has two different kinds of sounds and so does the harp. So Robin, do you have the harp for us to see? I do, but I have a question from Nikki and ah. she would like to know, what do you think about clarinet music? Oh, I like clarinet music a lot. Do we want to hear a sample of clarinet music? Well, how about this? If somebody could find something, that would be fantastic. Oh, Nikki's already said yes in the chat. Oh. I don't even know where we could, can, we could find clarinet music. Oh, wait a minute. We have a musical debate on our hands, Audrey, uh -huh. because Donnie has weighed in to ask about country music. Oh my goodness, I will tell you what's happening. Our lesson is going off on a tangent. We're going off on a musical tangent. I think we can visit these things super quickly, but I will tell you, I wanna come back to our holiday so we can celebrate it. And I think we can make a plan, a plan. I'll talk to Robin about this later. Maybe we can make a music, a, a class all about just different kinds of music. Oh, that would be a great idea. So I will bookmark this and we can talk about country music, clarinet music, yes. band, big band, all kinds of fun oh. things. Oh, at yeah. Another session for I love it. sure. Okay, I good. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to keep all your ideas and all your wonderments in our heads and uh, we're, we're all set. We're already planning. Okay, so now let's go back to the harp, please. And what do you have for us? What is a harp? I wonder if anybody knows what a harp is. Hmm. Should they tell us in the chat if they know what a harp I is? I think so, because everybody seems to want to be in the chat box today. So everybody think about this. What is a harp? Oh, we have an answer. Nikki says it's a string instrument. Oh, yeah. Nice She's way of describing Right. It. Very nice. And Zach says he thinks it might be played with your hands. I think ah, I agree with that I, one. It's true. So it sounds like we've got some ideas. Should we go through our pictures and then we can look at a picture of a harp? I think so. I think if I'm right, I learned today because I didn't know either. I didn't know. I've seen a lot of instruments. I've touched a lot of instruments. I've played some instruments, but I have never seen a harp still. So someday I'm going to see one and touch one, but I read that it is a triangular shape and triangular is cool because we're going to talk about tri today, meaning three. So am I right? Is it a triangle? It is one. It is. So, well, let's see. We are going to start first. We've got our picture of a, a shamrock. Should we start with that oh, one first? Let's do, let's do that. Let's, um, let's do that because a shamrock is really important. And I'd like to find out since people are so chatty today, does anybody know what is a shamrock? Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I am going to share my screen. Thank you. And what I'm going to do is click share. I'm going to put it into present mode so that I can make our picture extremely big oh, good. so that you can see. So the first picture we are looking at is of a shamrock. Now, I've made it look large on our picture but a shamrock is actually small. It can fit in your hand and it has three leaves. 
And when people draw the leaves, they actually kind of draw it in almost a shape of a heart. So imagine one heart-shaped leaf on the top, and then imagine another heart-shaped leaf on the left and then the right, and their points all come together in the middle, and they are always green. So if you see a purple shamrock, somebody has painted it. They are green shamrocks. Oh, you know what? There's also another little tidbit that Miss Leanne shares that a shamrock is even, there's one even smaller um, than it could fit in the tip of your thumb. Did you know that? No. That a shamrock is so small. Some of them, most of them could be just the size of the tip of your thumb. And so right now I have taken my thumb and I am looking at it. So everybody touch your thumb right now and know that a shamrock could be that small, but in pictures, they make them look very big, but they are oh. always green and they usually are a sign of good luck. Thank you, Robin. All right, are you ready for our next picture? I am. All right, our next picture is something that you might not have ever heard of before. It's called a shillelagh. A what a? A shillelagh. What a fun word to yes, say. It is. I know that everybody is muted right now, but I would love for you to say, repeat after me, shillelagh. Shillelagh. I'm sure everybody practiced saying that one. That is such a fun one. So we are looking at a picture of two shillelaghs. And I have outlined it in yellow so you can see what it looks like. So the shillelay is laying flat and it kind of looks like a cane. And it makes sense because when you see pictures of leprechauns, they usually have this little cane with them. And now I've learned that that's called a shillelay. Is there anything else, Audrey, you wanted to share about shillelays? I will say that I've just learned about them too. And that when I heard that it was part of an oak tree, and then when you're explaining that it's really looking like my cane, I, I you, you helped me learn more than I knew before. So thank yes. you. And remember this shillelagh usually isn't as tall as your white cane because a white cane is a little bit taller and it extends out when you walk with it. But a shillelagh is kind of like the cane you think of with your grandma when she walks around with like a little support cane. Um, so it's got a little notch for your hand to curve around it and then it helps you walk. And Nikki put in the chat that it is a funny word and I agree. Have you noticed that I keep saying the word shillelagh? Cause it's yes. so fun to say. And you're making me laugh all the time with that word. <laughs> well, the funny thing is um, you kind of spell it in ways you never thought of. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of fun and tell you the spelling of the word shillelagh. It is S-H-I-L-L-E-L-A-G-H. -L -L -E That's kind of fun too. And I see yeah. some braille contractions. Oh, yeah. All right. So a shillelagh is like a cane. Our next picture is that of a woman playing a harp. <sighs> so the woman is sitting on a bench like a piano bench. And now when we say harp, we typically don't think of instruments that are very tall and big. But guess what? A harp is exactly that. It is very tall. And it's very big, kind of wide at the top mostly. So now imagine if you were sitting on a, on a bench and your dad or your brother or somebody much bigger than you is leaned back and they keep their body straight and they rest on your shoulder. That's kind of how the harp leans back in that triangle shape. So one arm of it is resting against your body and then one part of it goes 
across and then it connects to the other part that goes down. So it's like a it's like an upside down triangle so that the tip is at the bottom. Oh. And then the wide part, right? The part that's against your body. And then the part that's extended, there are strings that connect up and down in this harp. So again, a harp is the shape of a triangle, mostly upside down. The point is at the bottom and the widest part is at the top and the strings go from top to bottom and you do oh. something called pluck the strings. So when you play them, it's kind of like bling, 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 although it makes a much better sound than what I just made. But do when you play them together, it's so beautiful. Do you use a um, something to pluck with or do you just use your fingers? You just use your fingers. So you just oh. use your fingers. And a harp is such a lovely instrument that most people, including our own Leanne, have them play at weddings. <laughs> it's so beautiful to hear the harp play, here comes the bride, or lovely, soothing music. So the harp, next time you get a chance to see one, it will be amazing. Wow. I really want to go and see one and I'd like to play one. I think that would be so lovely. So that is one of the, the pieces, the uh, kinds of music that is played in Ireland and really, really happy music. And one thing we, we um, already looked at is the leprechaun. Oh, and let me keep going on our pictures. Oh, our next picture great. is of a cartoon leprechaun. Oh, good. So the one that we are looking at is not real. It was drawn, but it is a very happy drawing. And it, it is a tiny man and he has a suit with a vest and it's all green, all shades of green. And his socks are orange and green striped. And he has these big black shoes with an orange buckle on them. So as we work our way up from his big black shoes, then his striped socks that we can see, then he has green pants and then around his waist, he has a black, big black, kind of like a belt. It's called a cummerbund, but it's kind of like a belt. And then he has a light green vest on, a dark green jacket, a green bow tie. I think he really likes green. I and think so. Most times when you see a leprechaun, he has bright orangish red hair, like a beard, and he has it on his hair. So it looks very striking against the green. And then in one hand, he has something called a pipe. And you might not know about a pipe because a lot of people who are younger these days don't really smoke a pipe or use one. But you might have a grandpa who was a pipe smoker, so you might learn what it is. But I'm sure in this pipe, it just has something fun and magical inside of it. And I then he has a big smile, bright green eyes, and his hat is very special. His hat is a green brim, and it's a very tall hat. So it's not like a baseball hat. It's more like a top hat. And guess what color that is? Green. It's a green top hat that's very tall. And our leprechaun is sitting on something that I wish I could sit on top of. He is sitting on top of a black pot filled with gold coins coming way on top of it. So many gold coins. And then if you have vision, look at his black pot and look at the bottom. And at the very bottom, you will see lots and lots of green shamrocks. So many things to look at with our leprechaun. I would like to go and catch one today. <laughs> and then we have, oh, sorry. Oh, no, please go ahead. Oh, I was going to say we only have, I think we have got one more picture mm -hmm. and our picture 
Now, these are real people. We are looking at three Irish dancers because oh. Irish dancers are very popular, not just in Ireland, but they tour the world and you could do classes in your hometown even. You could compete in competitions. And so we are looking at three traditional Irish dancers. And so they are girls and Irish dance girls always have their hair in super tight little curls and they wear a very nice headband. And then they wear a long sleeve dress, but the, the skirt of the dress is short above their knees so that you can see their legs. And then when you go down, they always wear white socks and they wear these special black shoes, not like our leprechaun shoes. These shoes make a fun sound, a clackety clack when they play. So we're looking at three Irish dancers who have their legs crossed as they stand and they are actually kind of standing on their toes. And that concludes our tour of Irish pictures, Audrey. Back well, to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am applauding. That is such a lovely tour. Um, when I think about the leprechauns too, I thought they were a little larger. I read that they're about the size of your thumb. So that everything has to be really teeny. Is that, does anybody know anything different? Or I thought they were a couple of feet tall. So I read in one of two of the books that they're about really super tiny and that's why they're so hard to be caught. And that way, if you catch one, then they have to take you to the pot of gold. Does, does anybody know the size of the, of the leprechaun? What do you, um, let's see if anybody tells us in the chat, if they know the size of a leprechaun, whenever I see people dressed like one mm -hmm. at a parade, they are usually short, but Donnie thinks that they could be very big. It might be a good idea to go. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the sound of my cell phone. Um, uh, I think you could do a little bit of research, but yes, I think in cartoons, they are small and in books, but if you see a leprechaun at a parade, it might just be a short man. <laughs> could be. Well, imagine trying to catch a little man the size of your thumb running in the grass. That would be really a challenge. And I read a really nice story and it's called A Fine St. Patrick's Day. And it's in the chat and it's in the, the um, uh, letter that I sent out. And it's a really short, short story. You can read it in about 10 minutes or, or less. Um, and then there's another book I put in there. I think it's called The Story of St. Patrick um, and, or, or St. Patrick's Day. But the first one is about these two towns, Tralee and Trala. Don't you like those names? I love the names, Trali, Trala, they sound fun. Makes you wanna start singing. Um, and they always have a competition every year about who's going to win the Golden Shamrock Trophy. And they have to see who is the best. And there's a little girl in the story who really does something magical. And there is also a little man in the story and that's all I'm going to tell you. But it's a wonderful story and it's really worth reading. Uh, a fine St. Patrick's Day. I think you'll enjoy it and you'll learn about Fiona and what she does and helping the town. And it, I just, I love the story. So thank you for that. I think we need to, to be in a St. Patrick's Day parade. And what are we going to be? We can be leprechauns, we can be marching women, marching men, marching boys and girls. We can carry a green banner way up high, stretch your arms way up high and carry a banner. Or we, we could hold the banner together with our friends. Um, we can really all dress all in green. So just put your magic thinking caps on and just dress yourself all green. I'm doing that. And I think I'm going to be a leprechauness. And that's a word I just made up. Because if I'm a lady, and I'm going to be a leprechauness. Um, so maybe, maybe that's not politically correct, but that's who I am today. I'm a leprechauness. And anyway, so here I am, and I'm really tiny. I shrunk myself up, and I need to ride on somebody's shoulders. So I'm going to, 
uh, so that everybody can see me. That, that's what I'm imagining. I'm gonna give everybody just a minute to start imagining who you are in this wonderful parade. You can use your drum, you can beat on the table, you can march in your chair, your fingers can be the marching, march your, um, your feet, your fingers can be your feet, and you can do what, whatever you want in this parade. And it's St. Patrick's Day. And just think after the parade, we're all going to go and have um, wonderful things like shepherd's pie or corned beef and cabbage, all these wonderful things that people like to eat soda bread. And um, so just think about imagining all those good things you'll be eating after the parade. I'm going to have um, the McNamara's band play that, that song. And then when the next time we do some musical things, we'll look for more different Irish music and maybe we'll even talk about dances like a jig, an Irish jig. So we, we're gonna have an eclectic music time um, when I work with, with Robin. Okay, so excuse me, keep imagining and play McNamara's Band by Bing Crosby. McNamara's Band single version by Bing Crosby on Amazon Music. Get ready to march, everybody. Isn't this cool? Oh, my name is McNamara. I'm the leader of the band. Although we're few in numbers, we're the finest in the land. We played wakes and weddings and at every fancy ball. And when we played at funerals, we played the march and song. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze away. The Carthy punks the old bazoo while I the pipes we play. And Hennessy, Tennessee tools the food and the music is something grand. A credit to the old Ireland is McNamara's band. Right now we are rehearsing for a very swell affair. The annual celebration, all the gentry will be there. When General Grant to Ireland came, he took me by the hand. Says he, I never saw the light. Back to Maris Band. All the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze away. I think that was a really fun parade. Is everybody tired now? Come on, something good to drink. Some green, green juice or green soda. Can anybody share who you were in the parade? We will wait and see. I would like to say that I was somebody who danced in the parade. Could I be a performer? And I got to jump around and wave and smile. Oh, Donnie says that he would like to come as St. Patrick. Oh, very nice. And Nikki came as a clarinet player. What a surprise, Nikki. You were there in band. Oh, and Leanne says she was somebody who twirled a large flag. How fun. Oh, so there. we had quite a parade going. That was good. Well, we, I'm ready for a quiet game right now to end our time together. And uh, just before we do our game, think about next month, about all the April things that are coming and anything you might want to share with us because when we meet again, April will have already begun. Hey, Miss Audrey, Miss Audrey, something happened. We cannot hear you very well. Oh. Could you speak up a little bit louder? Yeah. And we will try this again, everybody. All right, Miss Audrey, go ahead and say something. Okay, how is this? It is a little bit better. But just what? know that for our remaining six minutes, we mm -hmm. need you to be the loudest Audrey that's ever around. I will. And I don't know what happened with my computer. How's that? No, oh, that's definitely better. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to do a quiet game and I'm going to do it in a loud voice. <laughs> but before we do our quiet game, I want to thank everybody for being here and for doing all these fun things. And do you know that on my list, I had at least 10 more things we were going to do today that we don't have time to do. So we're gonna bring them in for the next round in April. And when we come in April, we are going to have already started with April. So think in your minds next time about any April things that you may want to share with us, okay? 
So here we go. We're going to do a quiet game of short and tall. And I'm sure you already know the answers already. So please put them in the chat box. Number one, what is taller, you or your cane? What is taller, you or your cane? And we'll see what answers we get. Well, Donnie says his cane is taller, but I would say I might be taller than my cane. Let's I see if we have any. Oh, mm. Mike says that he's taller, but Nikki says that her cane is taller. Wow. We're a dead split. We are. My, I'm taller than my cane. So, hmm. Okay. So we don't have, we have two right answers. They can both be right. So we don't have just one right answer there. Number two, you are taller than your refrigerator. Is that true or false? You are taller than your refrigerator. Well, I bet there are people who are taller than their refrigerator, <laughs> but I'm definitely not one of those people. And Donnie, you are on my team because you said false. <laughs> um, but Nikki said true. It just depends if you were lucky to be a tall person. Yes, that is fun. We have more than right, one right answer there. Number three, thank you, Robin. Number three, you are shorter than your sink. Think of your sink. It can be in your kitchen or your bathroom. You are shorter than your sink. You can't reach the faucets. All right, so we might have a few of our little ones where that could be a true thing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where, and we see a lot of people saying false, but I will say that my student who is with me, she's pretty small. So the sink is actually taller than she is at her house. Ah, okay. See, these are cool questions because you don't have just one answer. Number four, President Lincoln was the shortest president. President Lincoln was the shortest president. Oh, we have a fast answer from Jeremy. He says no. Hmm. Oh, Donnie says false. Mm -hmm. President Lincoln, wait a minute. My student is... Uh, thinking back to her President's Day lesson about that one, and she's a little stumped. But Mike says false. What do you think the answer is? Well, I think the answer is false because President Lincoln was the tallest president. And number five, the giant in Jack and the Beanstalk was very, very, very short. The giant in the Jack and the Beanstalk was very, very short. I hope Let's I sounded see. like a giant. Oh, we have lots of people who are saying no or false. They are correct. He was very, 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 very tall, gigantic. Your cane is the same size as a shillelagh. I get to say the word. Your cane is the same size as a shillelagh. And this is our last question. Now, some people are saying no, but guess what? My little student who is with me is just a young person. So she has a tiny cane. So her cane is the same size as a shillelagh, but some of our older students and taller students are saying nope but my little student monica who is with me she's only in second grade and so her cane isn't very big it's probably the same size as a chalet wow well thank you everybody for all these fun answers and i look forward to seeing everybody when spring begins and it'll just have gotten started for a few, uh, about 10 days or so, or well, no, two weeks. And we'll have more to report on spring and April. See you then. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, everybody.
<laughs> Thank you so much, Audrey. Hope we see all of you again. Tomorrow is Vincent Van Gogh's Sunflowers. Mm, we're going to do a little bit of art. And on Thursday, we're doing Basic First Aid. So we look forward to seeing you the rest of this week. And Audrey, we'll catch you next month. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, all. Bye-bye.